Hello again and welcome back to Organic Chemistry Tutorials. So in the last two videos we discussed things about um, bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. So if you can work out what's going on in there, fair play to you. And before that we were talking about the atomic orbitals of carbon molecules and hybridizations. So today then is kind of a combination of the two. So it is about molecular orbitals. So as I said, in the last video, we talked about the molecular orbital of hydrogen atoms, but that's very easy because you're talking about two atoms that are the exact same coming together, forming one antibonding orbital and one bonding orbital. However, if you take the example of methane, which is a carbon with four single bonds to hydrogen, you now have to show the orbitals of four separate hydrogen atoms as well as the orbitals of a carbon. So hopefully you have seen the other video where we talk about hybridization of carbon, but if we haven't, we'll do a quick revision. So carbon has six electrons. So the first two will go into the 1s orbital. The next two will go into the 2s orbital, and then you have two electrons left, and they will fill two of the p orbitals singly because electrons don't like to be in pairs unless they have to be. So because this is the inner shell, this doesn't interact at all when it comes to hybridization. It stays just as it is as the 1s orbital. But as we already talked about, when a carbon has four single bonds, it needs to have four orbitals with a single electron in each. So the way it does this, because currently it has one orbital with two electrons and two orbitals with one electron each, these will actually combine together to form sp3 orbitals. Okay, so the s refers to the fact that there's one s orbital and then the p3 refers to the fact that there's three p orbitals. So the resulting hybridized orbitals are three quarters p character and one quarters s character. So that means that the orbital is going to be like a dumbbell but really lopsided because of the s orbital character. The energy of these orbitals is going to be most of the way towards the energy of a p orbital because they're three quarters p. So now we have four orbitals of equal energy and four electrons. So they are going to populate each orbital singly. Okay. Now the hydrogen atom, much more simple. It has a 1s orbital and it only has one electron. Okay. So when your four hydrogen atoms come together to combine with your carbon. The carbon will have to have sp3 hybridized orbitals, orbitals sorry, so that each hydrogen can form a bond with one of these orbitals. Okay. So what happens here is what I've drawn. So if you have your x axis is energy. So once again, the higher up the page it is, the higher in energy the orbital is. So we're just going to imagine for the sake of it that the sp3 orbitals of carbon and the 1s orbitals of hydrogen are in equal energy. Okay. So first we have to draw where all the electrons are. So in the case of the carbon, we know that in the sp3 orbitals, we have one, two, three, four electrons like so. And what I've drawn here are the four 1s orbitals of the hydrogens. Okay, so there's one orbital for each hydrogen depicted here. And then there is one electron in each of those. So what happens, and it's the same as what happened before. So if you look at what happens with the hydrogen atom, and this is from the last video, you're going to end up forming the same number of orbitals overall. So if you started with two orbitals, you're going to finish with two orbitals. So in this case, we're starting with four orbitals on this side and another four orbitals over here. So you have to end up with eight orbitals overall. So the same thing will happen as before, where you're going to end up with orbitals that are now much lower in energy. And you're going to end up with four of them. Sorry, I've drawn them really small there now. And then you're going to end up with four orbitals that are much higher in energy. So what happens is, and it's the same story every single time, so the atoms, sorry, the electrons are always going to want to be in the lowest energy orbital. So what will happen is in each orbital, you're going to have one carbon electron, one proton electron. 
again sorry for that being so small what's really important to remember and it's i've said it before is that when you draw two electrons in a single orbital one has to be pointing up and the other has to be pointing down and this is similar to what we talked about last time about the phases of your orbitals needing to be opposite so the same thing here the protons always have to be in the opposite sorry the electrons always have to be in the opposite direction to each other so what you have here is your bonding orbitals and each of these orbitals represents one of these carbon hydrogen bonds okay and then what you have up here and these always exist at the same time are your anti-bonding orbitals and what happens when your anti-bonding orbitals Sorry, if I can just write that down. When your antibonding orbitals are populated with electrons, what starts to happen is the molecule becomes much less stable. So when a molecule has all of its orbitals and all of its electrons really low in energy, it's very stable and very inactive. So methane in general is very inactive. However, if you start to say heat it up, for example, when you burn it, you start to move the electrons to the higher orbitals you put electrons into the antibonding orbitals when you end up with an equal number of electrons in your antibonding orbitals as you do as your bonding orbitals then what happens is you're not actually saving any energy at all by having these bonds together so the bonds will then break so that's just an example of a slightly more complicated um, molecular bonding orbital because as you can see with hydrogen it's very simple two electrons two orbitals and it's very simple but generally speaking this rule holds through all the time if you started with four orbitals or if you start with eight orbitals rather you'll end up with eight in total in the end as well so i'm sure many of you are glad that this will be my last video that i can think of anyway on orbitals because for most organic chemists we like to think more about polarity rather than the finer details of electronics but i hope i've made it a bit clearer and a bit easier to understand than how you may have started in the first place so uh, this is the last video i'll be making today so for my first day i decided i'll go all out so i think this is maybe number seven or eight uh, and I hope to keep making at least one video a day during the week and then extras at the weekend to try and keep up with how much you guys have been donating. And it's been really great. So stay tuned for next time and hopefully we have a nice video coming.